The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is a solid core XY 3D printer that has become a workhorse for me. Besides running a PEI bed that I picked up before Bamboo released their own, my machine is completely stock. This is mostly due to me being happy with the printer as is, and that the X1 Carbon doesn't exactly make modding it very easy. Although my recent printer builds haven't been overly flashy, I am generally a sucker for LEDs. The Bamboo printers have an LED strip, but it's only on one side of the printer and not very bright, so today we're going to fix that. A buddy of mine, Dutch developer, wanted to improve the lighting on his X1 Carbon, so he created the BL LED controller. This ESP8266 base board allows you to add LEDs to your Bamboo Lab printer that can be turned on or off from the printer and change colors to let you know when a print is done or there is an issue. The best part is that the firmware is open source and it doesn't require any tinkering with the printer's electronics. In this video, we will take a closer look at the device, go through the setup process, and get this installed on my X1 Carbon so we can see it in action. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. First, let's talk a little bit more about the device itself. As mentioned, it is an ESP8266 based device that contains a secondary board that allows you to connect a 24 volt PSU and LEDs to it. For the LEDs, the recommendation is RGBWW, which contains RGB LEDs along with white and warm white. The BL LED controller is able to be controlled by the printer through MQTT or Message Cubing Telemetry Transport. This is a messaging protocol for communication between IoT devices. In simpler terms, the Bamboo Lamp printer puts off some information about itself that the BL LED controller is able to then read and react to. This is commonly used in things like Home Assistant and various automation. Setup is primarily getting the controller configured for your Bamboo printer. Currently, this is confirmed working on the X1, X1 Carbon, and the P1P. I would imagine that the P1S is likely going to work as well, given that it's basically a P1P, but I don't have one in hand and I don't think anyone's been able to test one yet. I did run into some issues initially once I got this set up, which we'll touch on shortly. For installation, to start, remove the board from its enclosure. This can be done by popping up one of the corners with a flathead. You then need to install the CH340 driver onto your computer. This is a super common driver that may already be installed, but it only takes a minute to install and I'll have a link in the description for it below. Next, connect the board to your computer over micro USB. Make sure you don't have the 24 volts plugged in while you're doing this. When plugged in, the controller will create a hotspot called the Bamboo Lab LED controller. Take out your phone and select it under Wi-Fi settings to connect to it. It will then pop up a window where you will click configure Wi-Fi and enter your Wi-Fi credentials to put the controller on your network. Once the controller connects to your network, it will stop putting out that hotspot and your phone will automatically disconnect from it. Next, head over to the BL LED controller page on the Dutch developer website and click connect under the flashing section of the page. I usually use Brave browser, which was not compatible, so I ended up having to use the Edge browser, but you should be fine using Google Chrome as well. When you click connect, a window will pop up where you need to select the port for your BL LED controller. If you have multiple options here, you can unplug and then replug the controller back in to see which of those options disappears. This will open a small window where you will select logs and console. Here you can see the device's IP, its username, and its generated password. Enter the IP into a separate window, and when the pop-up appears asking for your login credentials, use the username and password from the console to log in. The last step is to enter your specific printer info. This is what allows the device to read the status of your printer and be controlled through its actions. You'll need the printer's IP, access code, and serial number. On the X1 Carbon, the IP and access code can be found under network, and the serial number is under general in your settings. For the P1P, you need to dig a little bit more, but it's all under the settings area of the little screen. Click save to store your printer settings, and you are now ready to hook up your LEDs. In addition to the LEDs, you're also going to need a 24 volt power supply and a little riser to adhere those LEDs to. I was a little bit blown away by the price of these LEDs on Amazon, so I ended up ordering them off of AliExpress, and I've been really happy with them. I'll link the specific LEDs as well as the PSU that I'm using in the description down below. 
the riser prints in four pieces and then is just friction fit together. I went with ABS for my riser, which is very likely overkill, but I would at least recommend printing it out of PETG. There's a slot for the LED wires to feed out the back of the riser, and you just peel off the adhesive cover on the LEDs and adhere them on the inside of that riser. Hooking up the LEDs to the controller is pretty straightforward, but make sure that you double check everything. I ended up swapping my blue and green wire, which wasn't a big deal, but you definitely don't want to put the voltage into the wrong slot. For right now, I just have the LED controller dangling behind the printer, but I'll likely end up using some VHB tape to adhere it to the back. All that's left is to plug in the power cable for the controller and power on your printer. It might take a moment for the controller to boot up, but the LEDs that you added will mirror the behavior of the built-in LED. So if you turn on or off the LED from the screen or within the slicer, those LEDs that you added will also do the same thing. In the current controller firmware, the LEDs turn off during the leveling sequence to not interfere with the LiDAR sensor, and then they kick back on as soon as the print starts. In addition, if there's an error like the front cover falling off or filament running out, the LEDs will all turn red, and when a print completes, they turn green. Since the firmware is open source, you can download the source code in Arduino IDE and add additional status LEDs or remove them altogether. When I first got my BL LED controller all hooked up and powered on, it was not working correctly. I couldn't turn it on or off with the screen and it wasn't also doing the status changing colors like it's supposed to do. Funny enough, while I was trying to figure it out, XPS Aramis reached out to me about another Bamboo Lab mod that he's also working on that's using MQTT. With it being open source, he was able to make a couple of tweaks which got the LEDs to turn on and Dutch was able to patch the initial bug that I was having. It seems to have been related to the firmware that my printer's on, which looks like an unreleased version that changed up some of the behavior of the printer and MQTT. I was told this error is not one that he had seen before and should not be an issue on anybody that's on the current latest public firmware. Since the Bamboo printers are evolving and updates can change these messages, Dutch created a Discord server for feedback and troubleshooting should you run into any issues. One limitation of the BL LED controller is that it's not recommended to be used on a unit that's using more than one AMS unit. This is due to an increase in the message size that can cause an issue with the controller's functionality. Since it's open source, it's entirely possible that a workaround or a patch will be released, but for right now, more testing needs to be done. I've really been enjoying having these extra lights inside of the printer and being able to control them from the printer is also very cool. As much as I'm not a huge fan of needing a secondary power supply for the controller, it's probably the smarter option than trying to wire it in line with the printer because if you were to do something incorrectly, short something or damage something, then you probably would be out of warranty. And that has been the BL LED controller. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. I also will point Dutch over to the comments here so that way hopefully he can answer some of those questions himself. If you do wanna find out more or pick up one of these, I'll also have those links available in the description below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.